I'll I'll shoot something else with you. Oh really? That's awesome. So I just hung out and cool. and like waited and um and then we went into his private bathroom mm-hmm. and he did a foot fetish shoot for me. What? That <laughs> is fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 Fuck that is with Polly Shore. You heard it here, folks. That's fucking awesome. Welcome back, one and all. Thank you for listening. If you're new here, this is the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty podcast, and I'm your host, Molly Stewart. We define wholesome a little differently here, and my guests span everywhere from the adult industry to the vanilla side of humanity. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. Word of mouth is what helps this podcast grow. So share with a friend, leave a comment, download an episode, or anything you can to help with the algorithm. I release episodes every Monday, and if you're subscribed, you'll never miss an episode. You don't want to miss out on all the crazy conversations that evolve here. Um, But that's enough from me, and let's get to today's guest. Those are all beeping, or beeping, blinking. I know what words are. We're all good. All right. Welcome back to the Totally Wholesome, Not Dirty Podcast. I am your host, Molly Stewart, and today's guest is Curtis Walker. Would you like to introduce yourself, Curtis? Uh, Yes, I'm uh, totally wholesome and very clean. I just had a shower and a bath. And peed all over yourself in the tub. Yeah, because I'm not going to get out of a hot bathtub to go pee. It makes no sense. And, you know. It's your own home. You can do what you want. The Bellagio. Yeah, oh, of course. That's what it's for. <laughs> the Bellagio is made for peeing in the tub. <laughs> How many, I, I think about that. It's so funny. Like, uh, just the desecration of hotel rooms in Vegas. It's like even the really nice ones. It's just like, you know, the fucked up shit has gone on in there. You just, you just don't even know. I think about it sometimes. What if you had, though, um, a Bellagio of, of dicks? A Bellagio of dicks? Peeing. Oh, like the fountains. Yeah, I just have the one. You couldn't really do it with cum. Most people can't cum that long. Not, <sighs> no, no. But, but peeing, no, that would be something fascinating. That's like a very, <laughs> you got to uh, come up with something like maybe that the, for the studio. <laughs> You're the, a small scale. Like. Maybe the puppetry of the penis guys could. Oh, I, I, maybe I could have like a, a fractal lens that like. Mm. Def, you know refracts the lens like mm. one of those splitter things yeah and so you could even go working with only one or two dicks and make it into like 50 just doing all this right 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 and like, layer it in like in uh what is it final cut i'm learning yeah. final cut i've been doing a lot of editing lately i'm learning video okay we shot a little video I yeah cut, we shot cut a, a little, little video bit. yeah and and you're um primarily photography then as well so that's my whole background mm-hmm. but my initial passion like when I was looking, going to school, I wanted to go um, to school for learning how to make commercials and music videos. Oh, okay. So now it's become very easy to do that. Like you could do that whole thing on your phone. Yeah, te- yeah. Technically, so it, it's crazy how um, how much phone like cameras and all that stuff have progressed since but, I had like a flip phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you can you can shoot like a whole movie. Like I even shoot like um, customs or even just other videos for my platforms just on an iPhone. It's like I have other cameras. But if you're in a pinch and you don't feel like setting up all the extra stuff, I mean, it's yeah. there, it works. And the new one is, you know, is really good. And I've got an app that'll like run the front camera and back camera at the same time. Oh. So if you're doing like an interview camera, it gets both oh, videos. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that that was even a thing. Yeah. Um. So Curtis is the owner, correct? Like you you own and kind of run the, the Photo Bang Bang studio? Yeah, I'm I'm the owner. I'm one of the founders. Um, I'm the one that just keeps keeps things going as uh, times times move on and things change. Um, I actually started the studio in 2010 mm-hmm. with uh, Marcos Rivera, mm-hmm. and uh, we were both shooting out of our house at the time, which was becoming a limitation. And after a while, you don't want to bring all the strangers to your house yeah you're like oh it starts off with a few of the strangers is fine but then you start getting more notoriety and more people and you're like oh i'm opening myself and my home up to like so much potential (sighs) issuage yeah (laughs) you know and and so i've and i've always like worked with sex workers and like i've always found uh, that to be a clientele and so one of my first bookings at my home studio was with um you know a a lady i'd never worked with before who Mm -hmm. needed some promo photos 
And yeah, you just, you have no idea. And now with OnlyFans days, it's like, who even knows like who anybody is? Yeah, this, like, there's there's like a so huge random. new swath of like performers that are like, just amateur performers. I don't even know that I would, I mean, I guess they are performers. When I think of performer, I think of like at least somebody that a few people know, you know what I mean? Like, but it's one of those things even with OnlyFans, like now you're competing against all these people who aren't really performers or are new to it and stuff. And you're like, they're just giving out this shit for free, essentially. And I'm like, what is the point of you having this I, site if you're not going to try to make money? I think it's the new Tinder. Oh, is that what it is? I think that the new Tinder. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. I never understood those apps. I guess that's why I don't get it. I'm like, uh Well, I mean, porn's kind of a dating app in a way. I mean, people don't really get to pick their scene partners, but some people do, right? And then, yeah. And then that's, that's really hot. And like, oh, I really want to like you know, bang this person and they go yeah. and get to do that. So yeah, I guess that's true. I guess. So with so filming scenes, people are just like, I need somebody to film a custom with it, you know? And so it's yeah. potential. So, yeah, I guess I, I get, um, I get kind of skeeved out like with new people. I like, I, I do, I guess a lot of like research or, or at least try to like hang out with people before I shoot with them. Now I think just cause I've been doing it for so long that it's like, I like to have that, at least a little bit of familiarity. Like when I'm, when I'm working with someone, even if I've maybe met them, then going to work with them for the first time isn't as weird because it's like you feel like you've at least had a conversation. Yeah. Like sometimes shooting mainstream, it's like there was nothing wrong with it. And I, I enjoyed it. And I enjoy like being on set for a set day. It's so fun. But sometimes it's like you get in and you don't know who the other person's going to be sometimes until you're already there. And then they're sitting there on their phone, you know, do, 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 right until it's like, all right time to like snatch and it's like hello nice to meet you i'm gonna eat your pussy now <laughs> like it's <laughs> i just like to have a little uh a little back back and forth beforehand before i dive in <laughs> yeah and sometimes you don't even know what the scene's gonna be or who's gonna be in it or what the costume's gonna be or what yeah. the makeup's gonna look like it's just like okay we just need some holes please show up on or paint them and yeah i light am your hole and... today <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one thing I've, I've liked about getting more into uh, just before I did mainstream, it was all it was all webcamming, so it was all amateur, mm -hmm. and it was like that's how I started learning, you know, the ins and outs of video editing. And I've always been into like photography and video and stuff, so I guess it kind of gave me something uh, to kind of like latch on to in the industry that I was like, oh, I kind of like understand this, and I'll kind of cultivate this and learn more about it. And that was a really fun process. And then um, going into mainstream it was like this totally different ballpark of it's oh it's not any of your ideas it's just this is what the set is this is what the script is yes the script is ridiculous and yes you have to make this shit partially believable <laughs> like i think the i just try to think like how many times i've eaten someone out from behind a bathroom door while the other like extra pretends that they can't see me i'm like literally everyone can see me <laughs> like yeah. this isn't fooling anyone <laughs> But I think it's cool um, getting back, uh, you know, because I haven't really been shooting mainstream. It's been more fun to kind of go back. I wouldn't say necessarily the amateur route because, I mean, sometimes it is because I'm shooting my own stuff, but then I get other people to shoot it. And then it's still like you're kind of making your own set. You're making your own space. And then you and the other performer can kind of cultivate something that makes you both comfortable and more happy. And it, I feel like you get a lot more creativity and the fans like really like that because they're like, oh, this is something you imagine instead of like a group of writers or something like that. Yeah, and so on, only fans, or are we allowed to say names of yeah, you know? Yeah. So, but subscriber sites, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just getting into that. I've always, I've had my own Patreon, uh, which is uh, you can find it curtisjoewalker dot Go, oh, David, <laughs> put it there. Um, uh, or Patreon dot com slash cjw. Um, you can go there. You can check out my my stuff and subscribe. But I'm I'm just getting into OnlyFans now, and so I've dumped in a bit of money on subscribing to whoever I wanted to. Just yeah, just, just to kind of see like how they how most they mostly my friends, mostly mm -hmm. like people who I want to support because yeah. I don't really care what the content is. But then a few people who I who I think are like attractive models I would like to work with. Ideally, yeah, for sure. Which isn't an option. Like first off, cam girls aren't models. I don't know if anybody ever knows that, but like. It's not just like models and cam girls are not the same no. <laughs> like uh, species. It's, yeah, it's, and it, I can say that as someone who it's came like from banana webcam bananas and, and plantains. They're like yeah, they're similar, they're similar but, <laughs> but it's like oh, a little different. Yeah. And and I I totally feel that because I had that same idea kind of like coming into uh, so from camming. It's like you're you're not really you you take all of, you make all of your own stuff. 
essentially. Yeah. Or it's like, or people give you feedback on what they want. But then when it was going to like, oh, I'm going to go shoot for Playboy for the first time, I was like, I'm, how do I, Yeah. how do I do? <laughs> like, my whole body is just <clears throat> like, I don't know, as I'm used to being like in front of a webcam and, right. and, and talking to and entertaining an audience, which is a totally different ball game than like, how do you make your body look the best that you possibly can? Or how do you like, basically use this imagery to like create a story or a sequence or all this kind of stuff it's totally different and it's a whole new like learning curve which is really exciting but it's totally different so that's how i'm ordering customs oh really i'm not saying like you know like put put a coke bottle up your butt like i'm just you know like i'm saying like according to only fans terms of service i don't think you could do that anyway. okay <laughs> What a bummer. What a <laughs> It really is. No, I got I got goes flagged that idea. for a panty stuffing video because you can't put things that are not intended to go inside of you inside of you. Oh, so it like cancels out all like fruit. Oh. And I've even had some toys before that are obviously specifically that's, designed that's a, for that, but they good. have a weird shape. And so it can get flagged. And it's, I'm like, what's well, good? It's good for safety. I mean, it, I guess if it's good. if it's gonna be so mainstream and so accessible, I guess it's good yeah. they just keep it like close to close to the limits. Yeah. But whatever okay well and there's not, plenty of other platforms as but, well that, that do support that kind of kink stuff as well so yeah yeah exactly there's and so, but so what i'm telling people to do is like break out some colored lights like make it interesting like i'm mm -hmm. tired of like ring lights we've been seeing ring light up the up the ass all through the pandemic like mm -hmm. it's just i'm tired of i want like some color just have fun you know mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm also sending out like poses like little I have a pose book of sketches and mm -hmm. then I um take those photos and then I'm, I'm very like specific and then if I can order Polaroid customs mm -hmm. that's what I'm all about yeah and, and so people aren't really offering that as a thing they're doing but like that's how I want to interact as a photographer I would like to have photo shoots of these people but I can't and so mm -hmm. I'm like giving them model goals mm -hmm. to work out on their own in their own comfort zone yeah which is which is cool and I, I think it's it's important I think if you're kind of in any part of this industry to it's like you, you owe it to yourself to try a little bit of everything. So it's kind of like you can be really good at one thing like like webcamming, for instance, and like that's your bread and butter. But it's like there's so much that you can do outside of that as well with things like modeling. So but it's it's just like anything. It takes like a lot of practice. Like even when I look <laughs> well, <laughs> when I look back at like the photos that I first took for Playboy and I'm like, oh, my God, this is awful. <laughs> I just figured it out. I have the Photo Bang Bang Correspondence School of Erotic Modeling. I love it. That's beautiful. And, and then I, I give you the I, people pay me. So it's yeah. got to be a, like a Tom Sawyer situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not rich. So people have to pay me. <laughs> and then and then I will send them a series of poses that yeah. are beautiful that they can learn. And then they have to have a Polaroid taken or mm -hmm. phone phone picture. Polaroid though, I will be like really le more legit right yeah and then they have to send those to me and then i grade them and send them back okay hell yeah no i think that and but i guess it could all be digital but it, I mean, it could just, be digital you know, for sure photo but... bang bang where you can learn to be a porn star or yeah. just look like one yeah exactly i like that that's great <laughs> and and honestly like if you guys if if there are any performers in vegas who have not tested out photo bang bang i would highly recommend it um I've, I've done so much fun stuff there. And if you guys watch any of my content or see anything I post on social media, I mean, you have, uh, we did a scene there with uh, Madison Ivy and Jada Kai. Um, I've done a bunch of my own solo stuff there. They have like dungeons and all these different cool sets. Like the fairy forest, the fairy forest. Yeah. I did that. The Dorothy, <laughs> Dorothy and ass. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's a, that's like the most basic of our, of yeah, our and sets. it's so basic, but it still came out looking so fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and how, so I'm sorry, you said you've had the studio for, for how long? You started in 20, 2010? 2010. 2010. We were in the Arts District till 2019 and then lost our lease for, uh, you know, gentrification. No, mm -hmm. it, it, well, a new owner came and wanted to put in a restaurant. So everything's priced out down there. And I already had a relationship with the people over at my new building. They had mm -hmm. been like hunting me down for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. They loved the brand. They thought it was a really fun place. They would come there on first Friday and check it out. And uh, everybody loved the place um, over there. So I was able to move into a much larger space with the mm -hmm. help of Kink, yeah, uh, who needed some shooting space. So I was able to work out a contract with them that sort of helped the transition. And then once a the pandemic happened, uh, they went away. Yeah. Excuse me. No, you're good. <laughs> I've been feeling I'm like I've I'm only had coffee this morning, so I'm like, am I gonna be grumbly too? It's all right. <laughs> we'll just make we'll just our stomachs will whisper sweet nothings into the microphone. <laughs> um 
And so, yeah, I got, I started working as a PA for them and, uh, or not a PA, but a uh, lighting, like a grip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We already had, had a PA. And then, um, so I was just doing lighting and then I wanted a new camera. Mm-hmm. So I approached the director and I was like, Hey, how about stills? This camera can shoot silently. Mm-hmm. And so then I was able to layer my photo skills on top of the videography that was already happening mm-hmm. and we wouldn't have to do it twice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So it's, it kind of streamlines everything, makes it a little more efficient as far as just getting the shoot day done. And then that's yeah, because cool. ultimately like photography for adult work is is like not that valued. Mm-hmm. Like it has a value, but like you could shoot 1800 pictures and they might want 20. Yeah. Like no matter what you shoot, no matter, it could be 1800 awesome pictures. Mm-hmm. It was still going to like use 20. That's yeah. it. And, and of course, everyone's always more focused on the video and stuff like that. And I think, and especially more for like, um, sorry, <laughs> especially more for like company shoots and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like they have a lot less value on the photos from what I, what I heard. I think I, I could be totally misspeaking with this, but I don't think like uh, browsers even shoots like stills anymore for for scenes from what i've heard it's like a couple pretty girls and i'm not sure and and screen grabs have gotten so good now yeah because it's like you're already shooting at such a high quality that it's easy to just grab but i think like things like photos are more appealing for um the actual fans i think so when they come to something like the subscription site they're like oh now i have this plethora of photos i can use for my my desktop background i can cycle it out i can print my own things and hang it on but like hang So I do apologize for anyone listening or having to look at me today, but it has been a very long week and I cannot film relate words. I didn't get to sleep until three o'clock in the morning last night. It is a nightmare up in here. So actually I'm going to pull this out. (laughs) Oh my God. So I... I feel like I always overthink these episodes, especially when I have a lot in a row. Do you know, like the information and the different conversations you have with people keep oh, stacking yeah, on top of stuff. Yeah. And so I, I hope that you're enjoying uh, yourself. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it on track because I, 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 uh, I want this to be mostly about me. Yeah, of course. Of course. Because you, you love attention. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I, whenever I feel you drifting off and I'm getting lonely, just like, I just... Um, Listen, come- <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as um as far as shooting uh and stuff during the pandemic how did that kind of affect uh the studio stuff because if you're saying like it was you said 2019 that you guys had that shift and then almost immediately after that you're yeah. looking at yeah we had like the a, pandemic. we had a pretty good year because when you think about sure. that, that was like two or th- two almost three years ago for, yeah. for things now which is insane because it feels like such a short amount of time yeah. and also because i've shot at photo bang bang so much like even in the past like year yeah and so when you think about it's like it, it kind of seems long so oh, 2019 well, but it really wasn't that long ago but also so much time yeah so that's that's exactly um that is exactly sort of like when you came in a picture and that's at that point um kink pulled the contract for our uh company for you know for the production company i was working for so they we didn't have a website anymore or like anything so it was just you know uh like word of mouth almost like until you're trying to figure out how well to promote yeah it. well yeah so i mean I, I started going through my phone book and so i i was i had already talked to marcos he'd already shot at the studio a couple times you know but i had let because my i we I had all these photos in from like 10 years ago that started coming up in my feed of him doing photo shoots and like being goofy and stuff. And so I just was like texting him those. And so we, we hadn't talked in a long time. Then we sort of like opened up the conversation again. And um, and then I let him know like, hey, I can PA for you. I can do whatever because I'm like a free bird right now. And he hooked it up and uh, gave me some gigs, brought a lot of work through the studio and kept it uh, kept it up. And then I made a lot of connections then through that in, yeah, in great. the adult world. So now I'm working with um, you we yeah. shot and, yeah, and no, a bunch um, of other people. We shot actually I'll probably give David to throw it up here for those who are watching on the YouTubes. And if you're not, youtube.com slash Molly Stewart Chats if you want to see video episodes. They release every Monday as well. Um, but you'll be able to see some of the cool imagery that we've shot. And it was just kind of an impromptu little thing that he's like, I have this idea, I got all this projection stuff. Do you want to just come over and see what we can do with like some bodyscapes? And I was like, sure. Yeah. I love being in front of the camera. <laughs> Yeah, because you're like uh, the most fit person I know. Like you're very, oh, thank you. You're very um, 
defined, oh. like a Boris Vallejo oh. drawing or something. <laughs> it's not the first comparison that I've made. That. Um, That's funny. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really inspired by fantasy art overall. Mm -hmm. And erotic art, fantasy art, like I want it to I be. I feel like they kind of coincide as well. Yeah, and that and all the it's it's just about lighting. Mm -hmm. Like you can have a very erotic, explicit pose, but with the shadows happening, then mm -hmm. it's then it can be a very sci-fi or fantasy pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like a lot of stuff with um, most mainstream pornography, or even you know anything kind of like it's like super super lit, like we're about to be. You know what I mean? Like, like super super lit like everything almost almost washed out looking because it's like you have to see everything but i think some of the fun especially with things like photography or even like playing with videos it's like people see that you know blown out you know look down the tunnel of my vagina like with a you know spotlight or something so it's nice to give something and leave something to the imagination as well because it's it, it it's what comes I, down to erotic versus like explicit. I'm do you know not what a, I mean? I'm not opposed to shooting a projector down your vagina. Oh, you can totally do that. I'm just saying it's good to have variety. It's the spice of life. I just want to do it artistically. Yes. I want to do it in a way that's beautiful. <laughs> if you could um, project anything down my butthole, what would it be? Oh, well, maybe I don't want to go down. It Write would probably be like TWND podcast at gmail.com with what oh. you would like to project down my butthole. I would start with emojis. <laughs> emojis. Are you talking about the kind of emoji I think you're talking about if we're going down my butthole? Just happy faces. Oh, okay. We're not right. talking the, about the, the poop emoji, so don't worry about the round, it. The round ones. <laughs> the round ones. It's funny. I just uh, had a conversation with Daniel yesterday here, and we're talking about we're going to mint my butthole. A bunch of different... Maybe you can help me with that. Would you like to take photos of my butthole in, uh, with different mints? Mm -hmm. Different. Okay. Was we're talking like sprigs of mints, breath mints. All right, so we're gonna do this. It's gonna be amazing. You can maybe just project a mint for one of them, but yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> so learn photography because people might just randomly say, "Hey, I you need want to take pictures." You know how much I love a clean shave, but now that you've shaved your sack, what's next? Well, get excited because Manscaped has launched a new all-in-one skin and hair care kit designed to cover you from head to toe. Skincare isn't just for women. You can upgrade more than just your shave. And that dwindling bar of soap isn't doing you any favors. Treat yourself to an enhanced grooming experience with Manscaped's new Ultra Premium Collection. Your balls thanked you for the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, and now your armpits will thank you too with Manscaped's new Premium Underarm Deodorant. The Ultra Premium Collection also includes a hydrating body moisturizer to keep your skin smooth and fresh. Use it after you lather up in the shower with Manscaped's new aloe vera and sea salt infused body wash and their two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. With your skin and hair hydrated, Manscaped threw in a free gift to keep your lips soft and kissable. A three-pack set of lip balm made with ingredients like vitamin E, peppermint, and eucalyptus oil. That's four products and a free gift inside the Ultra Premium Collection. All products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, dye-free, and vegan-friendly. The best ingredients and zero compromise. See why four million men worldwide trust Manscaped to treat their balls the best. And now you can trust them with the rest. Get 20% off and free shipping when you enter my code TWND at checkout at manscaped.com. And we thank Manscaped for sponsoring this podcast. Yeah, and I just had this conversation too, because you know, whenever you do, whenever you do adult shoots, you got to take pictures of people's ID. And that, for me, for me personally, that's the creepiest part of the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that is the weirdest part. I, I don't like, care. I know why you have to do it. I get it. But, but I, like, I don't care what the people are doing, what like filth or deprivation they're about to exhibit in front of me, but I still feel a little sheepish saying, may I see your ID? May I take a picture of your ID, please? It's funny because... Because I, a, known, a known quantity should... Uh, anyway, but I, I understand why it's the way it is. I understand it's 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 to protect children and keep kids from, yeah, from becoming yeah. performers but, but, but at a young age. But what's funny about that is... is that especially when you're in this industry and you're shooting it or you are in it and you're actually performing in it, it's like what's private for some people isn't private for us. It's not something that is taboo because we're so overexposed to it. So then on the, on the converse side, it's almost like 
the privacy that we have that's the most important is what most people share openly is like the names you know where you live like that kind of stuff and now you just have that documented like right next to your fucking face and and it's like that is typically now what is most private it's not your butthole that's the most private when you're in this industry it's it's literally where you live or like your your full name and stuff like that so it it makes sense that that would almost be the weirdest part (laughs) you know what i mean because it's like industry advice use a passport because it has the least information yes, about you. About it. <laughs> and you can get a passport card for like an extra $35. It fits in your wallet. Yep. I carry that around. Um, Let me tell you, it's it's a game changer. Yeah. I was just shooting with the new model yesterday. And it was our first time working together. And she gave me her driver's license. And I was like, eh, you know, eh, you know, well, I, so I have to take a photo of it. And then she's like, I told her about the passport thing. She's like, oh, I have a passport. I'm like, okay, never take this out on set again. Just yeah. only use your passport yeah. because why, Why? you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a scary thing because you never really know who's kind of on your side. And it's like you, you well, do, and there's you, identity you get theft, that just idea. losing data. And oh, no, no, for sure. But it's like even, but even as far as like there's all the, the data leaks and stuff like that as far as that goes. But then even when it comes down to the individual person. Um, I feel like maybe I'm a little more sensitive to it because um, I, f- I feel like webcam is like a totally different um, ballpark than mainstream porn, for instance. So it's like there is a lot more there's, – there's a monthly competition. You know, it's not like you're competing for one award at the end of the year by just being the best in the scenes and stuff like that. You're on a monthly rotation of constantly competing. And so there's – I feel like there's so much more drama and – jealousy and envy and things that and things that go into things like camming so i've had my fair share of data leaks well before i was ever in like mainstream stuff you know what i mean and so i feel like by the time i got there i was a little more sensitive to that as well and just trying to preserve what little anonymity i had left (laughs) is it bongo hour i was gonna I just, I feel like I have to apologize to David, my editor, every time because I just, I am flailing. I whack. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So let's talk about your, the photo shoot we had Ooh, a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, that was super fun. Yeah. So I was, so I brought you in. I wanted to do um, something with bodyscapes because of the fitness thing. And um, we had worked together, you know, before. So we had a little bit of rapport. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we were able to set that up. And um, I had had this idea for doing video projector stuff for a long time. And I had just done one that was like video game themed mm-hmm. a, f- a few weeks beforehand. And that got me thinking about what other sort of things can I have come out of the projector and how can I make this like useful and stuff. And so I found um, some visualizations and some outer space kind of themed stuff. And I used some some other tools to create this sort of like uh, really atmospheric, like outer space yeah. and, goddess. And what was you know, so thing. cool is that the projections themselves um, weren't static. Right. So that, that's the correct way to say that, right? Like they, yeah, weren't, they, yeah. weren't, they weren't moving. They, no. were, they were not still images. They were moving. So they were like constantly changing. So you could basically have the same type of color and the same look from, you know, the one scene, but then in the very next photo, it matches, but it's different. So it was really cool to see all the different light play that could come out of that. Yeah, I think with static images, it would be a little easier in some regards, because you could absolutely position things the right Mm way. Um, but I've found some like repeating patterns. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you can sort of catch that pattern and and catch those moments. Cause Mm -hmm. yeah, there's some of the photos I took of you where there's just really not enough light on the face or just like one little streak. And sometimes it's cool and sometimes it's not. And then there's other times where it's just like washed and Mm -hmm. it's like really nice. Um, so, and the color you get out of a projector, you know, is incredible. So if you're going for anything colorful, it's like, body painting with light yeah well especially in tandem with uh, the psych wall yeah well because yeah you really need to have like that that really like blank you know type space where it can just play off of everything it was cool you're gonna give away how we how we finally got the best lighting or are you gonna keep that one your secret and make oh, people come shoot with you <laughs> yeah no i'll have i'll have a workshop on projectors yeah yeah we talked um, about uh some workshop stuff yeah we can do that at, at uh at that workshop yeah that would um, be really cool I so, think it's it's cool to be able to kind of, you know, share that knowledge and, and kind of teach people ways to to just kind of create better content overall or just kind of explore creativity in different ways. Because 
you don't often think about using things like I want to teach people the coolest stuff and work with the coolest people. Like I don't think people would have the opportunity to shoot with you otherwise. And now they could just buy a ticket to Photo Bang Bang and Mm -hmm. not see how and like weird I am when people are taking photos. (laughs) Yeah, but also leave with like like awesome photos. Yeah, like mind mind blowing stuff. Yeah, like your own personal photos. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to appeal to different different audiences and try to, um, you know, make something special that could really only exist in Las Vegas in a way. For sure. And I think that Las Vegas is a great place to to do that kind of stuff. And I, and I think the, the cool thing about workshops, too, or even just like I I've been working with just uh, so many new photographers, videographers, just people reaching out to me and being like, Hey, you're cool. Free photo shoot. And I'm like, hmm. Can I bring protection? And they're like, of course, I'm not going to hurt you. You know what I mean? And I'm like, cool. So we go and we shoot and we create. And, you know, I having not shot with a huge variety of photographers in the past, just because like typically even like through porn production, especially when you're a contract performer like I was, you're typically shooting with the same few production teams you know what I mean and and it's cool but then you are a little more limited in that way and I wasn't reaching out or branching out um in other avenues as well so it's been really cool to see that it's like basically still me and all these images right but they all look so vastly different based on who's shooting it and it's cool to see that there's so many different ways to kind of like bring something out of you know someone like a model or or any situation because everyone sees you differently yeah which is really cool because then they can bring like their own perspective and their own angle to kind of how you're presented which is so interesting even at the workshops Mm -hmm. everybody's got the same tool to see i can do it too that's okay Um, give them a pimp hat (laughs) um whenever uh whenever somebody comes in the studio for the workshop you know you have five photographers they're working with the same tools same lighting same set same model everything's the same and the photos aren't the same. Yeah. Because exactly. they've got different cameras, different lenses, but most importantly, a different perspective mm-hmm. and a different um, eye. Yeah. So I that's what really blows me away about the images that come back from the workshop is that they're the, the diversity of of the same ingredients coming back. Yeah, which which is so cool. <laughs> it's like the variety is the spice yeah. of life. But it, it's really fun to to just see all the different creativity that comes out of people because they're all creative and they're all talented in their own rights, but they're all so vastly different. And it's it's been really fun to kind of just explore and, and see what's out there and then also like challenge myself more too to be like, oh, you know, what what can I glean from this new person? Or, you know, like give me suggestions, give me different cues. And then you can take little different bits of knowledge and experience from all these people and then even, you know, push out crazier products in the end. And mm-hmm. it's really cool. It's fun. I like to get in front of the camera too. Yeah. Because then I can know that side and mm-hmm. like understand what it's, it's perspective and empathy, you know, mm-hmm. really. So like I'm doing underwater modeling lately. Ooh, cool. Which is a challenge, but it's a, it's a different challenge for the photographer than it is for the model. And yeah. so as a photographer, you're saying, do this, do this, do this. But if you don't, if you don't try it, and like understand what you're capable of, then it's like you could ask people to do the impossible thing, which yeah. underwater is basically everything. Cause it, unless you're a really, you know, trained synchronized swimmer or something, it's, you just float and you're just like drifting around yeah. and it's like, and it's hard to like, you know, maintain a position. <clears throat> it's funny that you say that about like, you know, wanting to experience the other side, especially with underwater, because I mm-hmm. had a scene, um, I can't remember what it was for. It was like, it was either Reality Kings or Melfo or something like that, but it was with Abella Danger. And <laughs> it was nighttime in Vegas when it's cold outside in the desert. And we're sneaking into someone's pool, right? It was not a heated pool. Oh, yeah. Forget it. It was not a heated pool. So we're trying, you're, they want like all these sexy shots of flipping up your hair and like, being underwater and getting the boobs bouncing in the water. And it's all psycho. And <laughs> our lips are purple. Like, we are dying. We're like, please let us run into the shower. Like, we need to do this. And they're like, oh, it can't be that bad. Blah, blah, blah. They weren't getting it. We're like, motherfucker, get in this pool. Get in this pool so you can see. He finally gets it. He's like, oh, they ain't lying. <laughs> like, they're not lying. It's fucked up. Like, he had to go underwater with, with the camera to get the shot. He's like, how are you alive? <laughs> 
And it's like, yeah, because you're not like you're just there observing and, and you're catching the shots. But it's like you're not experiencing the fucked up shit we sometimes put ourselves through to just like get those shots. Like, I don't know how I didn't look like I was dying when that scene came out because I was dying. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't stop my body from shaking. And she was the same. Like, it was oof, it was crazy. We had to. Uh, it, it got so bad, we ended up having to shoot it over the course of two days instead of just the one night because it was so cold, we couldn't handle it. We felt I, unwell. <laughs> I would be way more into this story if it was a kink scene. <laughs> <laughs> like the fact that all this like torture and like, you know, I know. pain and, like and just went what? to waste. And for what? You had to hide it. You couldn't even. We had even, to hide it. We had to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but yeah it's 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 just funny like i've had so many d- funny experiences like that you know got you know sick from using sparklers in a scene because they're like hold them this close to your face because we want you to be lit by the sparklers and me and i think it was jenna fox and we're just sitting there ah, go inside to start shooting like pretty girls and stuff Jesus. i was on we were on the <clears throat> floor i thought i was dying i was like i don't know what's happening is it food poisoning but she felt the same we all ate vastly different things. Everyone else was pretty much fine. And it, they were these the huge sparklers. Fumes. And it was like sulfur poisoning, yeah. basically. We like we were shaking. Like it was it was the most awful thing. Like I didn't fall asleep until like three o'clock in the morning. You gotta and then we went and shot yourself, it the next day. You know? How am I not dead? <laughs> <laughs> like it's dumb things. And I should have thought about that shit too and been like, do you think this is a good idea? Yeah, but you I don't mean, think about it. At the moment no, you just want to create no, the product. There's and you no get set, into mommy. It. You know, yeah. No, there's yeah. no like executive producer. No, like, but it's like, why? well, now they know. So now, <laughs> which is good. I guess it's just like trial and error and stuff. But yeah. it's it's definitely been such like a, a fun and interesting experience. All the different all the different shoots that I've done over the course of like what what do you think is like one of like maybe a couple of the funnest shoots that you've had like even at maybe just the studio to limit it more. Well, so I mean. I've been shooting for Hustler magazine. I'm their celebrity photographer. Mm -hmm. So I work with celebrities and uh, sometimes I don't know really who people are beforehand. And sometimes I do. And one of those ones that I did was Pauly Shore. And that was just a really fun experience at at his house, you know, but celebrities will set up like a shoot day. So like Time Magazine was there too. And Generally, Hustler Magazine doesn't like, you know, yeah. it doesn't prioritize for people yeah. like out of the industry, you know. So uh, we think we're cool, but sometimes the celebrities are like, I don't, I, I don't know how to, you know. Yeah, or I don't really care about this so much. I'm just well, they, doing they, it to no, do it. yeah. I mean, they have something to promote, and it's a magazine, and mm-hmm. it fits with their, you know, everything. But um, you know, sometimes they are really a fan. Like Ron White was like gave a whole like coming of age wow. story with Hustler, and that's so cool. You know, um, <laughs> And then, and then Pauly Shore, like he was just busy. And so he's all booked up all day. And so, um, I was about to be there early mm-hmm. and I, and I got to the off ramp and I realized no paperwork, oh, no. U-turn. So then oh, I show up no. 15 minutes late instead mm-hmm. of 15 minutes early mm, That's the worst. with paperwork. Yeah. Well, at least you had it. <laughs> Yeah, and then, um, but then now I got to wait for sloppy seconds behind time, Mm -hmm. and they're taking their sweet ass time, Ah, right? (laughs) But and 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 because they're in front of me, they're getting all the obvious shots. Like you walk into this house, you're like, I want to shoot this, I want to shoot that. Oh, that's a good spot to shoot. Nope, Mm -hmm. none of that's none of that's an option. Yeah. So we shoot a couple things um, that work for the magazine. He has like a little wet bar. And then, and I'm like, I wish we could get a little bit more. He's like, look, I got other stuff to do, but like, if you just want to like wait, I'll, I'll shoot something else with you. Oh, really? That's awesome. So I just hung out and, (laughs) and like waited and, um, and then we went into his private bathroom Mm -hmm. and he did a foot fetish shoot for me. (laughs) What? That is fucking crazy. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Fuck that is with Polly Shore. You heard it here, folks. That's fucking awesome. That is so cool. Um, yeah, so he was he was really fun, but he like climbed in his shower. We got all these sort of goofy shots. That's and, amazing. Uh the editor really liked it. And um I just shot with Marsha Warfield. 
Okay. From Night Court, who is a stand up comedian with yeah. Wanda Sykes. And so I love all those. And I, whenever I shoot with a person, I, I tend not to know who they are. I tend not to like have a lot of background, regardless of celebrity or adult world or yeah. a- athlete or whoever I'm shooting. I don't know who anybody is. But after I work with them, then I become their fan. Like Quiet Riot, the band Quiet Riot came mm-hmm. into the studio. And like I knew who they were. I, you know, I listened to music a little bit. I, I played some music before the, they, they came in. It wasn't my shoot. I was just yeah. hosting. Yeah, like I just kind of want to know-ish. But when I was there, I was playing uh, some music videos. Um, and one of theirs came up. And then I knew who they were because they had this whole like padded cell scene, which was one of my favorite videos when I was a kid. I yeah. mean, padded cell, like, I've always wanted one of those. And now I have a studio. I can have one. You can build one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've always wanted a padded cell because of that music video. And there's a dude with like the metal mask, mm-hmm. you know, straight jacket and all that. It's like burned in my brain. I was like, oh. Yeah, like, oh my God, they're here. <laughs> they're here. Yeah, and I bought that mask for my Halloween costume. I was eight years old. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, huh. like way back. And I still had it. And it was in my Halloween box at the studio. Yeah. So I went in the closet, grabbed the mask, I pull it out. And they're like. That's so cool. They didn't even have one for the shoot. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. No, it's, is it, I found it so fascinating. Like, it, and it's not like I've even met like famous people, but I feel like just being around creative types right whether it's like a performer and and even more than just a performer but like a a content creator and I say that as I know that some people are really into just more of the performing side which is awesome but then there are other people who want to flex their creativity a little bit and they want to really create their own content and create something cool and it's been really fun to collaborate and meet all these really you know like we said with all these vastly different um, ideas and perspectives and man People are so people are so interesting. People have appreciated my creativity and my honesty and my, you know, um, transparency. Yeah. You know, I don't have a problem calling myself a pervert or a creep. Yeah. Um, I uh, so I let people know that if it's over the line, let me know. And I try not to cross any lines. I just try mm-hmm. to make a, a nice day for people. I'm not trying to exploit anybody, but I am trying to like be creative and I am trying to get my creativity like seen and also mm-hmm. like val- like used, used by yeah. people who have value for it. Yeah. So um, the adult performers I've been working with and sex workers I've been working with really appreciate the creativity because they don't get it all the yeah. time. Well, I feel, and like, then, and I feel then, like art in general and, and, any, and then, any form of art is like a haven for the weirdos. And then I feel that as a fellow weirdo and, and it's a place because we, we aren't maybe normal and we are weird to some people (laughs) but if you come into a creative space i feel like you expect a little bit of weirdness because that's what creates something unique and interesting yeah that's what i was thinking yesterday is i I like to uh do really like i just want to do like nerd stuff with like hot girls yeah (laughs) exactly well we talked about even continuing the the gaming series and stuff like that with the projection with well, yeah, why can't I fucking talk? I'm so sorry. So I, f- I think I think I'm gonna roll on that in yeah. in April. I've got my five uh, to form Voltron. Ooh. <laughs> so yeah, I just want I want to get like five in the can. I want to like film just kind of film like a week or mm-hmm. you know like a few you know just try to get like several shoots done pretty quickly and then edit that up into a thing I could launch with. Yeah, that would be cool. And amazingly, everybody I've talked to just thinks it's a fun idea. They're interested in like helping out with it. Yeah, I've been down to do it for sure. Yeah. So that's that makes that makes all the difference because if I had to produce everything and come with my own budget for everything, yeah. it would be a lot, a lot harder. So yeah. it's it's really fun to just have like other cool people who want to like do cool stuff yeah, and, and, hope, sure. and hopefully create something of value that people are going to like dig on. Yeah. And, it, and it's one of those things like, I feel like even if you have an idea, right? Like even this type of thing, like we think it's such a cool idea, even if it doesn't pan out, at least we did it. And I think it's one of those things that I feel like maybe you're that type of person too, where it's like, even if it doesn't work out, you want to at least try and you want to create something cool because at least it's for yourself if even if nobody else appreciates it i feel like uh, i might get sick if i don't let the ideas out yeah (laughs) like there's so much (laughs) running around in here we have to like 
yeah. or it just explodes. Like you yeah, never know I'm, what it will fester into. I've still got ideas from like 20 years ago that I haven't shot because I came up with them with people I don't work with anymore or whatever. And I'm just, yeah. they're still there. And I'm like, I don't want that. I want them, I want them to be on a hard drive out of my head. Yeah. Like, but it's like on a, on a wall, on a, you know, something. I feel like that's, that's one of the reasons we vibe and, and a lot of other creative types do too. It's like, oh, I've got all these unfinished paintings. I have notebooks full of ideas, like half finished scripts, you know, like all these, yeah. all these plans and all these ideas, <clears throat> but it's like only maybe half of them come out. And then I keep getting more and more in the planning stages of other things and the brain goes everywhere because I think that's just kind of the creative mind is that there's so much going on in here and it's like we have the desire to bring it all to fruition but at the end of the day there's not enough time yeah and you really <laughs> and gotta it can be overwhelming you gotta really pick the low-hanging fruit sometimes and not not stress out and yeah. just get you know get the things that are gonna like provide you the benefit and Whatever. Yeah, there's, I still have a lot of like major, like bigger movie projects and stuff, but that's just, it's out of reach and it takes a larger crew mm-hmm. and more money, like more time, just, and, and yeah. also with, with everything that did, you know, go through with the pandemic, which oh, did we, did we get to like kind of how like things worked with the studio and stuff? Like, like during the pandemic time, I feel like we kind of glossed over it a bit. We might have kind of skipped over. Yeah. So, yeah. one, okay. So one of the best things um, to bring in business during the pandemic was peer space. Mm-hmm. We did talk about, I reached out to industry to, contacts yeah. and that helped fill a lot of the, a lot of the empty spots. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was only doing, you know, one booking a day for safety. Mm-hmm. So maybe my whole day was two hours. Yeah. So it wasn't a lot of earning potential. Um, so I limited my my bookings. I made it a two hour minimum at that point because otherwise mm-hmm. you'd be coming in for like seventy five bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's not um, worth not worth uh, your time. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's just to, for for the whole day, you know. So um, now now things are opening up and everything's different. But I was able to to you know pull from some industry contacts, let people know that like, hey, I don't like like I can't, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like if this is a resource, you should use it while it's here, kind of yeah. thing, if you can. And, uh, and that just really like worked out and, uh, I always treat people right. I always help out on, you know, with anybody's needs as far as like, uh, yeah, well, you've been awesome. Every time I've shot there, like it, cause when we shot the, the cosmic stuff, that was the first time we actually shot together. Cause you've always been there and like do the BTS and you help out with everything. Yeah. And that's why one of the reasons, like right off the bat, I'm like, yeah, of course I'll shoot with you because it's like, I've basically <laughs> shot with you a million times. Just you take all my BTS, <laughs> like you and Laura together. I'm just like, yeah. man, I have like so much fucking content. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. So yeah. And that, that's really important too, because when you do, uh, interact on in person, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier than, um, impersonal, you know, yeah, emails sure. or whatever. It's just really hard. Even phones, because you want to be like as professional as possible on the phone. Um, but yeah, when you're on set, it's a little bit more uh, easier to connect, maybe. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you get into the zone and you get into like the energy of the shoe and, you know, people can joke and realize like you're being creative. You sh- this should be fun. Like, right. you know what I mean? This this should be fun. You know, maybe the, the setup is professional. You know what I mean? And <laughs> and doing what we do is still professional, even when we are joking on set. It's just that our profession is different than it's, some people's right I, I mean it's like bedside humor you know mm-hmm. at, at a hospital or something i mean you're in this situation where it's like two people who at least i have never met are going to do something in front of me that's like pretty private mm-hmm. um lighten and so <laughs> and so you gotta you kind of gotta lighten it up you know and so yeah you know i'm there staring at the back of a camera so that that is like a separation for me from like being even in the room. I'm just looking at this little screen. Yeah, it's like it's like you're just watching it happen here. It's like you're just on your phone or anything else, and there's just people walking. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Almost like a, looking away from it is dangerous because I have to keep the focus on the camera. Yeah, so I have to make I'm, sure it's in frame, and it, it is a, a total separation. It's like it's like when people think I'm not like, even there. Yeah, you know? it, and it's funny because people think like, oh, being on a being on a porn set would be like so exciting, but. But I don't it, think like it can be. It can be, but but I think that a lot of people don't realize the separation that happens because even if you would potentially then be on the set, you're not actually the one shooting it, and it's and it's where like until you're actually in that position and in that role, you can't really 
know what it feels like. So potentially it could be exciting. But even if you're watching, it, it's like the amount of cuts, I the amount of like switch here, do this. You unless know, you're like the kind not... of person that like does math problems while you're masturbating, it's it's not a scenario that's yeah. going to turn you on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, because if anything, like you're watching this, right? But you're not even watching it as like you're watching a porno as you're recording I'm watching it. You're watching focus it points. as like, hey, you got a fucking dingleberry. Let's cut real quick and fucking get that shit, you know, like or or anything that might be out of the ordinary or hey, that, like my, let's change the angle. Like you're yeah. you're regarding it as a film and you're regarding it as a production, not as like oh my god. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you save that for the editing. Yeah, save that for the, the editing when you <laughs> Yeah, I said if I, some I said this one time to a model. I was like these photos are are so hot. I'm going to have to do some pre-touching before the retouching. <laughs> I like these photos raw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh I I don't say anything that people find inappropriate for very long. Although I did on um, I did say to a model cuz I just say shit whatever comes out of my head. Like I don't care. I'm I'm literally I'm doing math. Oh, and the my, filter with me is my, not my, my mouth. Like when I'm doing the photography thing, my my mouth just runs. It's like, mm -hmm. ooh, I got free reign. This guy's yeah. like paying attention to math shit. I'm gonna go yeah. do this other thing. And so, you know, the girl's bent over and she's got a really cute butt and everything. And I said to her, I would lick your asshole, but I wouldn't use your toothbrush. <laughs> And so she went through this like mild horror of being like sexually harassed for a moment oh, no. to then having it turn into this joke, yeah. which is what it, that's where, I, that's what I meant to say the whole time. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's so weird how like, I don't even know you, you're a stranger. I would stick my tongue up your butthole in an instant, mm -hmm. but I would not ever use your toothbrush because yeah, that's gross. Isn't that funny? Like... I, I see these memes all the time where it's like <laughs> taking a, a sip from a water bottle of a friend you've had for 30 years and he's like pouring it into his mouth. And then there's a guy like feasting on a watermelon. It's like eating a girl's ass, you know, 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> I'm like, that's our job. <laughs> I think it's so funny. <laughs> like, I, I really think it's funny. Like even, even on set, I've, I've always thought this was kind of funny. Like, We'll write our names on water bottles. Yeah. Right? And they would be like, all right, this one's Molly's, this one's, you know, whoever the girl is. And and I'm like, does it really matter? I'm going to be licking every inch of her crevice, like, from clit to butthole. <laughs> and then maybe past butthole. <laughs> like, does it, does it matter? Like, I think all the germs are going to be exchanged at some point. <laughs> like, it's funny. <laughs> I did never even like, and it's so funny because like growing up, I was never like comfortable with my body at all. And now it's the thing that I am the most comfortable with. Like things like this are less comfortable because like I'm clothed and it's like, it feels, it feels more, it feels more bare than just being naked. Cause I'm like, well, now you're judging me for what I'm saying, <laughs> not the way my tits are bouncing. So, so, but it's, it's a totally different thing. And a you lot of people. You can't get a brain implant. I'm sorry? You can't get brain implants. No, unfortunately. Or, or like brain gem i mean i guess psychotropics or something but i don't know but <laughs> i don't know i did therapy and it worked out pretty well <laughs> that you know um psychedelics or psychotherapy they're they're both uh practical yeah. means to an end yeah i think like psych psychedelics have always kind of like like i, I would i i haven't i mean, maybe i would someday i don't know it just is something that kind of freaks me out it's you know when you're like a little bit too afraid of your own brain and it's like i've also heard of people vomiting and that's honestly one of the biggest things is so, i'm so terrified of vomit it's like one of my mush the science on mushrooms is really growing mm -hmm. and it's out there it's like a body of science yeah. at this point i, I keep and seeing more and more about it like it's, popping up just on social media and just they wherever. legalized it in like washington mm -hmm. or something you know so but um it's shown to be pretty effective for like anxiety and depression and at the end, like the experience of it for like a micro dose or like, you know, a small dose, um, it's just like really good weed. Mm -hmm. You know, it does have a little bit of a disorienting effect. I do um, find myself doing a few weird things like you, like when you first started smoking weed and you would get confused and you'd like, why are my glasses in the fridge? 
you know I still sometimes just, yeah 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 just so sometimes that that'll happen but uh really you know and i'm not doing it like every day but just like once in a while and the mm-hmm. the um the experience for me it's very light I and mean, it's 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 a long like we're walking along together it's mm-hmm. not like lsd that's like come on man <laughs> yeah, i've heard some things i'm like no oh, thank you yeah that one's like that's like, like that's a that's a long like rock out it's it's I would say not a bad thing for mm-hmm. people to try, you know, but do it with with some intent and like find find a good environment to do it in, like ask somebody or you know, don't do fear and loathing in Las Vegas for your first acid trip. <laughs> it's it it, it bad you, idea. Well, yeah, it's a sensory overload and and you're really kind of exploring your own mind. You just kind of want to be comfortable and you can't. And so you don't want to be more uncomfortable. Yeah. So. I don't know. I like I like weed in that way, um, as far as like the exploring of the mind, because I am comfortable, and I feel like for for a long time I had like, and I I still do like every everyone does like the anxiety and depression and all that stuff, and I definitely used weed more when I quit drinking alcohol. Which, if you guys are wondering, if you're depressed, alcohol is the worst thing to put into your body. So just my advice. <laughs> But I, I found that, you know, sitting there with your thoughts is one of the scary things. And that's what I used alcohol for was to kind of drown out, you know, yeah. exploring my own mind and, and thinking about my life in a way that was more observant and less attached. And, you know, I spent a long time like in this house alone, right. smoking weed, being by myself, right. just working and thinking and trying to work through things in my own mind. And that was that was scary in and of itself. Yeah, But it was also a place where I found that I could, you know, kind of, you know, we talked about our brain having so many ideas going all over the place. And I have the same thing with like, you know, the obsessive thoughts sometimes about, you know, my brain just going random places that Mm -hmm. I'm like, why are we here? And then the weed kind of slows it down a little bit and kind of like helps me organize the thoughts. And I don't. After you get used to it. Yeah, for the, sure. The first bit is is a bit yeah. is a bit tricky, and I think people get freaked out by that, and they feel out of control, and they don't mm-hmm. want to feel like they're losing their mind, you mm-hmm. know. But it passes. Yeah, and it does. and and it really it's it is kind of like brain exercise in mm-hmm. a way. But you know, I'm not saying no, it, and know. it's not for everyone. It does not it does not work for everyone. I know people, you know, obviously, <laughs> and you know, different strokes for different folks. It's just like I have instance, a hard time socially. Yeah. And so if I had to, most, most people do. Yeah. Most people do. And so what are you going to do? Drink? Okay. That's what everybody does. But drinking is like toxic and it's carcinogenic and it's like. Drinking, I feel like. And it's addictive. uh, And it's, it's really insidious the way that it's addictive because it's so slow. mm -hmm. You think you're in control the whole time. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're out of control. And I I never feel that way with with weed. But also the the difference with alcohol, I kind of felt for me is I feel like alcohol is a very um, like people use it for social lubricant, you know, in most instances. Right. Um, But I feel like it brings out the selfish in people because it's it's something where you want to be social. Right. But you want to be social about yourself to everyone else. And I know this is someone who was like that. It's like, oh, here's all about me. Mm. Right. And I feel like with weed, I'm more like to listen to what people are saying, give kind of feedback off of that and try to actually like get into somebody else's brain as much as I get into my own brain with it. And then kind of be able to share that. Like I've I, like sometimes when people come on here, right. They get nervous, smoke a little weed and then things just start to flow because it's like you, you feel calmer and you feel this sense of kind of like wanting to share and wanting to learn and experience as well. It's extra vulnerability. It is, yeah. A little bit. And then mushrooms are definitely like a little bit more than that. But like it puts you in a childlike state, but in like a in a way that's like not ego enhancing. Yeah. Yeah. So I you're say. so you're just you're like looking at the world with like child eyes and like interesting things are around you suddenly, even mm-hmm. though it's the same old stuff. And like I get more inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like to sit down with a sketchbook and a fat J and just like see what I can do. And, and it's funny because sometimes, you know, you know I'll smoke and I'll like go outside and I could have already been outside that day. I, I train outside often, but I'll go out and I'll just and I'll just appreciate. Right. Look how beautiful the sun is right now. Mm-hmm. Or, or, you know, look at the way that the wind is blowing this. And it's like there are things that, you know, I obviously see in everyday life, but I, I feel like oftentimes um most people and definitely myself is just like 
everything is going so fast and there's so much to do in any given day. There's all these distractions that we have and we don't often make the time to kind of slow down and appreciate things with that like childlike sense of curiosity and wonder and awe. And it makes it easy to overlook the very simple and good things that contribute to our life on it's a daily vulnerability. basis. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, just, I like to do yoga in the park. Yoga was was a struggle to like get into because it's like I'm I'm a pervert, like I said, and so like I'm gonna go and like look at all these butts and little camel toes and and yeah. and, and, and the best part, the actual toes, right? Like mm -hmm. there's all these bare feet. Yeah, all these foot people, you know. So I'm like, how is this gonna work? And that actually is part of it, right? Because that that centers me. Mm -hmm. It makes it just about me. I'm not looking at anybody else. If I'm not looking at anybody else, nobody's looking at me. So it doesn't matter what the fuck I'm doing either. Yeah, and exactly. then that was very freeing. And then uh, doing it in the park, it was a like the most scary way to go after that mm -hmm. for me. So that's the only way I do it. And yeah. and then I like it better because of the sun and the grass and the oxygen. But um, yeah, it's... Being yeah. in nature is like, I think, really important in healing for people. And I think that's why winter is so dark and depressing for everybody because mm -hmm. there's yeah, just, I we definitely don't... get the winter downs. And it's funny because yeah. even in Vegas, I get it. I don't get it nearly as bad as like when I lived in Washington or even growing up in Michigan. Yeah. But it definitely is a thing like when there are gray skies or, or even I, you know, the Vegas gloom where mm -hmm. it's, it's sunny. We run out of oxygen. But it's not really cloudy, yeah. but it's haze. And it's just like, and it just makes me feel all depresso espresso. <laughs> you know, like, it's not, it's not fantastic. And, and then I noticed that and I, but I recognize it. And I'm right. like, okay, it's, it's this, I need to, you know, try to do something else to occupy my mind. But I feel like I had so many years of my life and it's probably just because I'm old now and I'm just, you know, whatever. But I didn't really have a lot of introspection. And I don't think that, you know, people typically do make time for it and, and really kind of do take the time to explore your own mind and figure out what you appreciate and, you know, take time to smell the roses and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. Know? My, my recent ex, she, she asked me, she's like, what do you want? And I think she meant something else, but I've been asking myself that Matthew McConaughey's audio book kind of challenged me to ask that too. Like, all right, all right, all right, man, his audio book is so, it's the, Go get it. Audible. I sometimes fall asleep to him on the Calm app. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like, do I want to do this? Like he was talking about how he, he had this measure of success and suddenly had like a maid and he was wearing shirts that had been ironed. And he's like, was it like, did I ever ask for that? Like, is that something I ever wanted? Is that like, you know, like I've got that now, but like, why do I have that? Because mm -hmm. I can have that, you know? So like, what do if essentially we could have anything we want, we mm -hmm. just have to want it and and make it happen, right? So what do I want? I don't. I've been an opportunist. I just kind of wait. I just like hang out and like it's like you know Amazon delivery day. All you know, it's just like opportunities come my way. I don't have to like go cho choose them, yeah. right? No, but I, but I feel you. So for the last couple of months now, I've been choosing my opportunities. I've been making my own things. So I've been. Um, breaking out of the shell mm -hmm. figuring out those those things you know um but i, I don't I, it's hard to know where to put the limit yeah when you're busting loose and you're no, like i i actually am relating to you so much right now because so um i mean you know that i i went through through a divorce um and then you know I didn't really, I, I didn't ever take opportunities you know, for the most part that were presented to me unless they were following, you know, the, the guide of what I was told to do. And since breaking outside of that and quitting drinking and wanting to be like, oh, here are all these opportunities that I've passed up and now I kind of have this, this FOMO. So it's like now anytime there's an opportunity, it's like it's part of the reason I've been working with so many new people. It's like if someone is like, here, let me give you some of my time and creativity and mesh it with yours and let's see what we can make. I'm going to take almost every opportunity that I can. But then I burn out and I start to get, you know, I, I, people overload because I'm so I'm so kind of like not used to being in that big realm of being always busy and 
and always being surrounded by people that maybe I don't even necessarily know that well, or even people that I do, I I'm so used to kind of being that lone wolf <laughs> type of person that it's very hard for me to, to do things like I've, like I've been doing, but it's part of the reason that I started this was to be like, all right, I need to force myself to learn how to talk to people. <laughs> I need to do it in a way that's public and scary because otherwise I'm not going to do it and I'm not going to force myself to branch out. Like, you know, I'm more likely to reach out to someone I don't know to be like, would you like to come on this podcast (laughs) to talk to me about your fascinating life rather than to be like, do you want to go get coffee with me in a public place? Like, and it's one of those things that maybe it's because I feel more comfortable in the home, but it's so scary to, to meet and talk to new people and interact with them. And then also want to do as much creatively as you can once you've realized that you have the ability to do so. Yeah. And you start to feel like you've wasted all this time. And you're like, but I could have been doing all these things. So I want to do it all now. Right. And it's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's something I, I run into a lot is people who are entrepreneurs. They are um, passionate about creating and they don't they don't have time to hang out i mean there's 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 hangout time and netflix time and stuff like that sometimes for people but i do that alone i'm not even trying to interact with people i'm so brain dead at the end of the day that i just want to like sit there Unplug. and like aimlessly doom scroll through twitter and like uh sit in front of my bong and my ipad and watch like either something news or something funny and then fall asleep mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't even, I've been on my own. I don't know how, how it would be to even uh, have somebody break that pattern up. I think it would be very disturbing for me. Mm-hmm. I'm like very well insulated by, by that. And then going to the studio, having my high intensity interaction with people. Imagine this interaction, okay? Uh, hi, nice to meet you. We're going to shoot today. And then, you know, you get to look at every inch of a person up and down their body and joke with them and have this whole like inter- mm-hmm. intimate sort of like experience or whatever. And then you get the photos, you go home, you get some other, you know, messages with them. And then, and then that's it, you know? So it's like really high intensity and then just like, Phew. yeah. And then, and then you, and then you have to wait for them not only to like the images, which mm-hmm. I'm not worried about. Yeah. But, but, still, but then but you have you to still wait. have the anticipation. You're like, what is the feedback going to be like? Yeah. And are they, are they going to use these? Are they going to be excited about them? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be something? Are they as excited about this as I am? Right. Is, is something I get to, I get, um, like, I love shooting, which, like I said, I used to be very just ashamed of the body. So it's, and I used to be on the other side of the camera, you know? And so now this is like what I've become accustomed to even more so than shooting. I'm used to being in front of it now. And I get like these adrenaline rushes from a new shoe, especially if it's like with a new person. Cause it's like, you'd never know what's going to happen. And even if it's someone you shot with so many times before, it's still that exciting experience because I'm here for it. Like I'm ready for it. But then it's like, you have this, like you said, the super high intensity day. And then, but then it's like, Oh, you have all this background work to do as well. And then you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to see these photos, but I have all this other stuff to do and you're just dist- distracted and you're like, well now, like when do I have time to like decompress? And you maybe get like a couple hours yeah, if and you're I, lucky, you know? And, and then just, you do it again the next day. And I just keep digging the hole deeper. The shovel, you could fill the hole or you could dig the hole. And yeah. I'm choosing to just keep digging because, you know, I want to get all these shoots in, but I'm like... Yeah, you can bury me when I'm dead. I'm like 10,000 <laughs> photos like you know, from the finish line, I've got like a lot, yeah. I got a real big backlog. And then yesterday is another thousand on top. And, mm. and I've been shooting really long lately. Yeah. Where um, our shoot wasn't particularly short. Like we shot, I think, three to 500 images. But I mean, the other day I shot something that I was kind of directing. It was sort of like choose your own adventure, like lesbian bondage situation. Oh, cool. And it's photos. So you can just sort of talk through it. And mm-hmm. it was that so that I think that can be time consuming, and so I filled that camera up. I've never filled the camera up with photos. It's yeah. like way too many. It's like eighteen hundred photos. So, for one idea, mm-hmm. right? So there's a lot of options we could really cherry pick and just have like the best of the best of the best. You know, photos that are option. You know, poses mm-hmm. and everything. But um, it's it's a lot to go through all that. Just just the time, just to look at eighteen hundred photos, just to look at them, just to mm-hmm. pick out the ones I even will want to edit. I mean, that's going to take me two hours. Yeah, that's why I 
I think that there's so much value and I know, you know, there's a lot of models um, who primarily only do trade work and I do trade work when it's offered to me. However, I like to, because when I see the images that you create or even the, the images of the other photographers that I've paid, it's like, I know that I could maybe do something similar, but it would never come out to the quality or the particular eye that you or any other photographer would have in that particular situation. And when I know how much work goes into editing like video content or even editing photos and going through that many photos, having to pick out the bad ones, having to edit this and, you know, blemish here or, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it is literally so time consuming that even like art direction aside, literally paying someone for that amount of time is worth that to me because that is time that otherwise I would be spending when it's like, well, I could be doing another shoot or I, you know, I have all these OnlyFans messages to answer, you know, I have all these customs to do. And it's like, I think that more creators um, should realize that when you do pay for a service like that, it's beneficial to you as, as a creator. It, it's a write-off on your taxes, bonus. You're employing someone who has a different creative eye that can bring to the table for a totally different look for the fan base, a totally different set of images to add to your portfolio and your content package. And it's time that you don't have to spend creating it. The, uh, the other fun thing is that, uh, I, I like feet. Mm -hmm. I, I think I said that 500 times mm -hmm. today. You're a Quentin Tarantino man. And, and models don't get feet. They don't understand it. They might have them. They might have great ones, but like, they don't, know what that means or how to work they don't know how to work that mm -hmm. so imagine somebody with great tits they don't know how to work that the thing with feet though is like if you're a foot guy you might be able to walk up to a stranger and be like can i rub your feet and they might just say yeah but you walk up to somebody and be like can i rub them tits like it's always going to be no <laughs> like take it from take it from me it's <laughs> always going to be no it's like I've tried <laughs> once in a while. Once in a while, you could you could get it in there. I will say it's possible. You you might get a chest massage or something. You know, if you're really tense, you gotta try it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's why. I think there's a lot of reason to like feet. And one one thing, we don't have any feet to look at. But there's like there's like this little bit like right here. David put a foot there. <laughs> It's got to be big. The toe's got to be open. Mm -hmm. You got to see the ball of the foot. It's all got to be like about round, round shapes. Yeah. If um, your feet don't hurt by the time you're done shooting your foot fetish photos, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but um, there's this little bit of skin in on the bottom of the toe between like the pad and the ball. Mm -hmm. And that's like, for whatever reason, in my head, the most private area on a woman. Mm -hmm. Like you're never going to see that because it's always under. I don't know why. I, yeah. just, I somehow computed that in my head and that's like that's how I have my game wired up in my brain and so when people have their their foot showing that bit then it's properly posed mm -hmm. but there's a bunch of things about feet that work and there's a bunch of stuff that I don't like that other people do like mm -hmm. like and, um, and that's even what's beneficial too about working with someone who yeah. does the work that you do is that you know, you could have so many different avenues that you haven't even unlocked yet and different ways that you can pose and you can have someone essentially, you can pay someone to not only teach you how exactly. to create better quality products, exactly. but they are also then taking and creating those products for you. So it's like you can also then translate that into not only shooting your own content better and more efficiently, but you can even bring that into shoots with other photographers as well. And then you can keep gleaning all these different ways yeah. to basically pose yourself um, to be more comfortable in front of the camera. And I think that that's super beneficial, even if you, you know, shoot with the photographers a couple times, even just looking at how much better you'll be able to pose yourself, you know, for photos if, in your phone. If they communicate well. If, if they communicate if well. If they're, you know. But I, but I yeah. found that even just being in front of, uh, being in front of someone else's lens, even if I'm not maybe a huge fan of their photos afterwards, just that experience alone is like, okay, well, here's what I potentially don't like in a photographer, mm -hmm. or here's what I know would look better on me. And they told me to do something else. So mm -hmm. it can almost kind of reaffirm things that you, that you maybe do know about yourself as, as a model or whatever as well. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, book photographers, you should do it more often. <laughs> yeah. And, and book ones that, that like respect you and respect your time and, uh, you know, respect the work they're doing. 
Exactly. And, and that's one of the biggest things that comes back is, you know, respect. And you need to have it for yourself because it, it and if I you know I've said this probably ad nauseum so many times, but if you don't have respect for yourself, then other people aren't going to give you I, respect, basically, I, because it's like I think the Dostoevsky quote is a man who cannot be honest with himself cannot have self respect, cannot have respect for himself. A man mm-hmm. without respect for himself can't respect anyone. Mm-hmm. So until you're honest with yourself about whatever i mean that's like the process i'm going through right now mm-hmm. i'm just like being like pretty bluntly honest with people and myself and being like okay yeah i would like to take pictures of your feet are you okay with that okay yeah good then we're gonna do that and then everybody's happy yeah yeah it's definitely it's open up these doors where like not being honest or being like sheepish or just like waiting for opportunities to come my way mm-hmm. um it doesn't it doesn't like work out as well yeah for and sure so and, I, and I, even I, like yeah. putting that feeler out there like just and if they were like no then you're like great now i know this you know what i mean but it's like until and, and if someone for instance were to ask you to do something in a, in a photo shoot that you didn't want to do it's up to you at the end of the day to make that known because if you're not comfortable doing something absolutely don't do it and this is someone and this is coming from someone who you know not necessarily in scenes and stuff like that um but just in my own personal life you know and and that translates to work it translates to anything you know you have to be the one to set you know your own boundaries and if people step outside of that then don't interact with them it it, it is up to you at the end of the day and you can't prevent everything from happening but you can definitely be proactive in trying to ensure that it doesn't and that, you know, trails back to having the respect for yourself and the honesty for yourself on what you're comfortable with and, you know, what you're willing or not willing to do. And you were talking about trade a minute ago, Mm -hmm. which was something that I sort of had a breakthrough on this week. Uh, Personally, it was like, you think about trade. So what is that? As a photographer, it's like, okay, so you get photos and I get photos. We share the content maybe, I post it to my people for my purposes. You post it to your people for your purposes. And we both sort of gain from, from that. Yeah. Otherwise maybe it's, uh, you know, I shoot exclusive things for you and then you shoot exclusive things. And and we, we we each leave with like exclusive Mm -hmm. photos that are each our own to do with the same thing, but now it's not shared content. And then there's also, um, the ability to like share shooting, so like if you shoot with a model who's a photographer, you can swap the camera and shoot for each other. Mm-hmm. So that's another another way of doing trade. Yeah. Um, and then there there was some other way that I that I thought of as well, but it slipped out of my brain. But the thing is, is like with the trade shoots, there's always like a way as long as there's a mutual exchange. So if somebody's working with somebody at a lower level or a higher level, there has to be some sort of value for both. You know, yes, for both exactly. People. That's that's what I say with trade all the time. I mean, both people have to get something out of it because, like, going back to you know, even Pay, you talking about talking yeah. about how much time you spend just going through those images. <laughs> so at the end of the day, if it's like a trade shoot, should it, it it's a it has to be equal or at least mostly equal on both sides that's agreed upon by both parties. Otherwise, it's like you basically have one person doing oh, just a bunch of work for free and being like, and now I have everything. So, so, <laughs> so today I, today I like, I made a poll on OnlyFans and I put up one, one image from a recent shoot and I'm like, Hey, here's a recent image. Guess what? Guess what we shot. And then I did a little poll so they can guess. And then, um, at the bottom I said, Hey, leave a tip, you know, for me to prioritize this in my editing queue and I'll, I'll get these out sooner. So mm-hmm. the model could do that mm-hmm. or her subscribers could do that. I don't, I don't care. Mm-hmm. But if somebody does that, I mean, like twenty bucks goes a long way. Yeah, that's for a chi- sure. that's a whole Chipotle. <laughs> that's that's everything you need right there. <laughs> um, you know, but I did have I did have somebody. I like jokingly, a customer came in and they paid me like for some headshots, and I said, you know, when can we get these back? I'm like, oh, whenever. But if you tip me, you know, I can get them back tonight. And <laughs> yeah. then they tip me, so I was yeah. like, oh shit. I guess I have to do it tonight then. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, (laughs) but it it comes back to like, you have to value your own time. But then at the end of the day, you have to, you can't like put such a high value on yourself that you don't value anyone else as well. Because, you know, when you are just creating your own content, for sure, you can value yourself at whatever you want. But when you, when you end up taking up somebody else's time, 
and they're taking up your time, you have to realize that there has to be some sort of, you know, equal exchange. Otherwise, why would that person, you know, want to work with you at all? Yeah. Yeah. Because that could potentially be time that you would or any other photographer would be missing out on potentially earning from someone who's willing to pay them. Yeah. So my my muse for the past couple of years has been uh, Cheryl Birch, Bend It Like Birch. Mm -hmm. You, you uh, yeah. brought her in for a shoot mm -hmm. at Photo Bang Bang. Yeah, she uh, was in the, the photos from uh, the workshop. So you guys remember Tina's episode, if you guys want to go check that one out. Too. Um, and so we, we had a little bit of a falling out misunderstanding. And mm -hmm. so we stopped working together for a little bit. But we're like 50 shoots in. Like we've got a lot of, of, of shoots. Um, and we, we just would keep coming up with like new ideas. She'd bring her, her stuff, her contortion and her ideas. And we would just come up with different locations and lighting and, mm -hmm. and, um, so forth, you know, and, it, and it was that social interaction, especially through the, um, through the pandemic that mm -hmm. was like so important as a creator to have somebody I could just yeah, always, always sure. count on to, to work with, um, and so we we uh, started mending things again, and like the relief from me is like, yeah. she she called me with just like some random thing, mm -hmm. and that she needed help with, and just I had to stop in the middle of the conversation and just tell her that I was like so happy to yeah. hear from her again, you know. Um, so hopefully we're gonna have some shoots again, and we're gonna get back on the get back on it and now i've got a lot of new ideas to work with so yeah it's for sure that'll be that'll be exciting <laughs> nice yeah but um yeah so i don't know uh what else i could tell you about the studio i've been trying to think of something um you know really interesting we, we have had some some parties and events we used to do music things there we used to be open for first friday but now that we're not in the arts district for, for those who may not be from vegas what is uh first friday First Friday, they have them in most cities, uh, you know, but it's usually a thing in like the arts district of a town or city where uh, galleries are open late and there's usually some street vendors and maybe some food trucks. And so in Vegas, it's all of that plus some Vegas kind of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and it, it it's the first Friday of every month. So, you know, that's when everybody gets their welfare checks. So it's a good night to be open. <laughs> <laughs> and get some of that Skrilla. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, where our district is in the ghetto, but it's fine. No, it's it's funny. Like I, it, it's funny with Vegas. Like out of anywhere I've lived, I've I've pretty much never felt unsafe in Vegas. Maybe I, I'm not going to the right spots. I have had people pull guns on me. Oh, my God. Okay. I feel less safe now. Actually, the thing I felt the most unsafe about lately is people fucking driving, or should I say, like, not driving? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, no, it's pretty crazy. I, I have a certain driving style. It's not compatible with, with other people, and I drive I drive a, a, you know, a pussy wagon. Not in the sense that it's a car that's going to pull a bunch of pussy, but it just is a pussy Prius mobile, you know, oh, yeah. and I, and, Same. oh yeah, <laughs> Prius um, family, <laughs> you know, and so it just doesn't get a lot of respect on the road. But I mean, you know, fuck them. I when they drive past me with their with their giant trucks, like speeding with their flags on them, I'm just like, like do you, you want have a small penis? It's fine. Everybody, I just knows. I'm like, do you want to like, do you love buying gasoline that so much? Like, I'll f you can fill my tank up too. Like, <laughs> my brother messaged me yesterday he's like i bet you're feeling pretty happy about your prius right now i'm like i don't even know what the price of gas is right now <laughs> and look i was like jesus christ yeah <laughs> like i never fill that car up it's amazing yeah is that that's a plug-in one <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure yeah like i don't drive enough to mm -hmm. like and then anywhere around vegas you can pretty much get most places on pretty much charge and then it charges on the way home and you're like yeah Please. And there's, yeah. you know, charging ports everywhere. So yeah, mine's not the the plug-in style, but it's still, you know, fifty miles. Highly per recommend. Or so yeah. highly recommend this car, especially, <laughs> especially now. <laughs> I was seeing, like, do you know what is the price in Vegas right now? Do you know for gas? Is it? I th think it's around like four sixty, four seventy, something like that. Damn. I don't know. Fuck. I, I, was, I made a joke about it. I was like, finally, you know, we got this $5 gas, the good stuff. The good stuff. <laughs> that primo fuel. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my God, man. It's, it's been crazy, but like, what, what is with all the accidents? I feel like it's all the time. I almost got T-boned the other night. I feel like every are... time I leave the house, which isn't very often, there's an accident somewhere. So I'm not involved, luckily, but it's been close a few times. People are really stressed out right now. I mean, we're like, humanity's on the brink of like, at least, at least probably like, uh, uh, like realistically, right? Like we're on the brink of a regional nuclear war, right? That's sucks. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a crazy <clears throat> time. It's, it's and like, so, how and many years has, it's been like year after year after year. It's just like, can we have a break? Like, mother. yeah, <laughs> you know, and then prices are getting squished. So, you know, everybody's just getting like, because they have this on top of the pandemic. So it's not like the economy there's, was there's doing great from that. Inflation and then mm-hmm. the gas prices. And so there's just a lot of economic pressure on individual yeah. people. And so people are stressed out. And, you know, there's the political division. But there's also in the people don't move to Las Vegas necessarily for like the best reasons. Like they weren't like doing the best where they were to like come here sometimes. No, no. And so uh, California just like I think you get a driver's license when you're born there or something. You don't have to like do anything. So they come out here and they don't have any like concept of like why why there are speed mm-hmm. limits or like why yeah. why there's road signs. And or, it's like well in California it's like you have to try to get everywhere as fast as you can because you're spending your entire day in traffic it's like i when i lived in california it's just it's miserable the driving is miserable but it's like then you get to vegas and it's like it can be not bad you can get everywhere really fast compared to la slow down calm down don't be blaring your horn use a blinker for fuck's sake like we'll let you in just don't cut people off you know they got the they got these 55 zones on the freeway so you drive in 65 and then all of a sudden it says 55 because it's construction zone or whatever. Nobody gives a shit. What am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Am I supposed to not give a shit or am I supposed to give a shit? I don't know which. And it's like I had to regain my brain. And I'm like, okay, well, like I just want to be like a good example, which I believe would be someone that like pays attention to what's around them and like mm-hmm. reacts to that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I feel like I, I, being a former motorcyclist, Long, you know, use the blinker, I'm, like a, let it blink like a couple times before you even move. You know, yeah, like, no, no, I it's do a the communication same. device. And I don't know, like I'm such a stickler for like, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but like, it's, I think it's part of it because I, I used to ride motorcycles, and yeah. so I'm so, and I rode them in California as well. So it's like lane splitting, all that stuff, and the insane drivers of California. I don't know how I'm not dead, but. It was one of those things that ever since I learned that, which was so fucking long ago, like a lifetime ago, I'm so much more hyper aware when I'm driving that it's like my eyes may be looking forward, but I am seeing everything. I am always checking the blinds like and I'm paranoid because like I don't I'm looking out for motorcyclists. I'm looking out for crazy cars because that's just where my brain already goes. And so luckily I've been able to avoid stuff like that. But even with as aware as I am. It's like I've been hit, almost hit multiple times. It's yeah. crazy. No, and then there's people who are just like, I'm just, no, it, it's a speed limit. So I'm going to go 45. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> what the hell is going on with you people? That's why I don't leave my house. That's why I'm like, people come over here, please, because I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. That's yeah. where yesterday was such a bad day. I got scared to like leave the house. We had, uh, we had it's to go out at night, and I was just like, I, I feel like I could die tonight. I so don't know. It's a cursed day. We don't have trees. We don't have a forest. We don't have no. anything to like clean our air or whatever. And so the air gets pretty bad here. We get uh, ozone builds up, which makes people really aggro. And it makes people really dumb when Does there's not it? like not you feel like, you know, like when you feel like, you know, mm-hmm. that's because there's no oxygen. Right. So we just had like a bunch of wind and like the air is all clear. Sometimes that can bring in other garbage from other places. Other times it brings us like really nice ocean air. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, man, yeah. cool. So um, I did not realize that. That's interesting. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So sometimes it's a good idea to just GTFO mm-hmm. and like go to nature and be away from this yeah. place for a day that will do so Mount much Charleston is a nice little escape that's a close one mm-hmm. i mean that's like right there if yeah. you, and there's there's and it's it, i always feel when i go up there that the air is just hikes. you can just breathe it in and it is like it is a breath of fresh air literally yeah. <laughs> like because i feel like some like oftentimes in the valley you can't get a breath of fresh air yeah and there's it's the uh 
up there too, you have, you have less air, right? Like it's harder to breathe, mm-hmm. but the quality of the air is much better. Mm-hmm. The air, the, the oxygen content. And it forces really you high. to do that deep breathing, especially like yeah, when you're hiking which is and so stuff good like for that. You. It, yeah. It's fantastic. Yoga at 8,500 feet is ridiculous. <laughs> Cause if you breathe wrong, you, you don't, you can't. Wow. So you have to breathe right. So you're working everything with like maximum lung capacity, which mm-hmm. really stretches you yeah, know, for sure. your skeleton. So it, mm-hmm. it's really good. Yeah I, yeah, I I would love to go do yoga. There's a Telluride Yoga Festival, but it's like uh-huh. I'm not gonna drop like six hundred dollars on a weekend of yoga. Yeah. Like it's like for me, uh, yeah, nah. twenty five dollars is a lot for a yeah, class. You could, you could just rent one of the cabins up at Charleston and just just do yoga just on your do- little porch out there. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, hmm. I've actually stayed at one of those before. They're actually really cute. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend if you guys ever come to Vegas. People always ask me like. What to do in Vegas that doesn't have to do with the Strip? Mount Charleston. It's beautiful. There's like a lodge. You can get food up there. There's great hiking. And yeah, it's gorgeous. Do, do you know that that national forest, the Toyabe National Forest that it's in? You see the mm-hmm. sign when you get there. So that's the same national forest as as uh, Tahoe. Oh, really? Okay. 400, 400 miles away. Wow. Because uh, they're all the same forest. It's all mm-hmm. They were all part of the same forest when the state was a big lake. Oh, okay. So that's like what what's left over oh wow yeah well it's it's fantastic i remember the first time i went up there i was like oh this reminds me of california <laughs> yeah 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 and that the air is so clean and beautiful and i think that there's a huge benefit to you know getting out of your normal space whether it's like your home or your job and it's like all those things are great and even in my home it's like i've created a space that i'm very comfortable in i'm comfortable allowing other people in and it's where i do spend most of my days it's where i (laughs) work most of the time like i even shoot primarily here but you need you need to get out and remember the outside and i don't mean like a shopping mall i mean like the nature that you know the end i think if i from essentially you know i think if i was going to make a a children's a children's book of your journey here i think you'd you'd be you'd be a black widow who lives in a web and then and then one day you have to go out on an adventure yeah kind of like charlotte's web except maybe i don't die at the end is that what that's all about i I just like that's where they No, she doesn't go she doesn't really go on an adventure i I haven't watched that one in, in a while i haven't when was the last time i read charlotte's web oh my god there's a there's a cartoon on like HBO or something. Oh, is there? It's some somewhere. Maybe it's Criterion. I don't know. Something I paid for. It's. I, I, I remember there on my, was like a live action list. Charlotte's Web. I used to have it on VHS when I was a kid, and I uh. wore that tape out. Remember? Oh my God, VHS tapes. <laughs> I'm aging myself so much. I remember to rewind. My, my mom would get so mad at me if I didn't rewind. <laughs> my kid was born in 2006. Okay. <laughs> And my kid has a distinct memory of getting a Netflix VHS tape. Mm-hmm. And I said, A, that never existed. And B, there's no way you could ever remember that. Mm-mm. Like, but um, that's like I a, remember the, the DVDs. They never had VHS. No, there's no, no way I that remember, would No, worked. I remember the DVDs. Yeah. The VHS I remember was Blockbuster <laughs> and Family Video. <laughs> yeah, and ho- oh, Hollywood okay. Video. Was was a Vegas thing? That was a really a good change. Yeah, I was the I. I th- there may have been one in Michigan. I can't can't remember. I remember distinctly Blockbuster and Family Video growing up in Michigan. But the it, indie the indie the indie stores were like where it's at because mm-hmm. there was one by my house and it had video games. Oh, cool! And um, weird horror movies mm-hmm. like cult stuff, and then like the curtain area yeah you know? i remember the curtain area. i was i was thinking that and i was waiting the, for you because i was beads. gonna bring it up because I, I grew up in such like a conservative area you know and yeah. um it was always like it was like the local family video you know and by the time i could finally drive and i was like going out and getting stuff to watch you know mostly by myself but sometimes i would have maybe a friend my brother um so <laughs> i would go and start to explore and they don't pay attention and I was like, I want to know what's behind the curtain. It's porn. It's porn behind the curtain. It was, it was in a- this little Christian conservative town that they're like, we're so proud of how many fucking churches we have per capita. That's like our slogan is God. <laughs> Just God. And it's like, there's the curtain. Yeah. And there's all the porn behind it. Yeah. And then there's me. 
<laughs> well, and it was like somebody had to decide what videos to buy. Yeah, and it's stock. like so. Who was like, there? Just like going through, they're like, mm, oh, backdoor sluts nine. Yeah, like <laughs> you own the video, so you're like, I want to watch this one and 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 this one. You find out because it's like they only have like one specific kink, and that's the only shit behind the curtain. You're like, all right. That, I that, see you, Gary. I see you. <laughs> that was coming of age, though, when I was able to to go from the video game section. Then at eighteen, then I could go, you know. Back oh, I wasn't eighteen. Area. I just wanted to know what was behind the curtain. I was that wasn't supposed to be behind the curtain. Yeah, but I saw things. I was like, damn, titties look like that. I figured My titties don't look like. That. I figured out that there were uh, dirty comic books. Oh, really? And so that's that was one and of one dirty of dirty comic books. That was something I could get my hands on. What kind of dirty comics? My favorite, uh, Bondage Fairies. Bondage Fairies? Yeah, it was a series from Japan that was uh, translated. There's a comic book company called Eros, and they have like all the all the things. And a lot of them sound very good. This one had great art and really dirty storylines and really uh, really fun, like kind of fetish themes. But they're these little fairies, and they would like fuck bugs and stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. But they would be like anthropomorphic, you yeah. know, they, it'd be like a, like, you know, they'd have like human dicks sort of thing. And then, but they'd be like these little, little fairies and then they'd, you know, torture each other and there'd be like little fetish That's scenes. amazing. I kind of want to find a girl to put on like a ladybug onesie, <laughs> a strap on, and then I can be a fairy tied up in bondage being fucked by a lady. Or like a hedgehog. Oh, I like hedgehogs. We're going to have to, I but, think that we have not, to sort out But not Ron Jeremy. <laughs> no. What? Ah, no, no. Girl with a strap on. <laughs> not Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, he's a hedgehog. So I just want to make that. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, I was thinking like the the time that I met Ron Jeremy once at ABN and it was like an <laughs> impassing thing. And I made sure it was impassing because I was looking at this little troll of man. I was like, Oh Jesus. He tried to touch me and I was like, well, that's not going to fucking happen for you, buddy. That's why I show up to ABN wearing boots this fucking high. I'm like, don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man. I don't, um, they're not going to do AVN anymore. Are they like the, the whole in-person expos and stuff like that? I think it that's was over, isn't it? it? Cause it was pretty much over. Ex, I felt like for a while. X biz is still going on. Yeah. They're doing their LA the and X3 Florida, or but, stuff. um, I think AVN was already kind of on the way out because, yeah, of, that's how it seemed to me the past few years that they had it. My mind geek pulled out of the last one. Mm -hmm. And so that was a lot of booth and space. Vixen, Vixen and so well. it's, it's really now just like a cam girl meet and greet yeah which could be a thing yeah but it's like well then you have like exotica a, and stuff like that that's a whole so. different show yeah so i've been going to avn uh since the early days since the big days when the the convention were big when the booths were big the booths were 20 feet was tall it always and, at like, the hard rock or was never, it no, where was it where that, did it begin the hard rock is like the downscaled version yeah that's that's what i that's what i had Af heard but i after, wasn't sure where it had kind of like started uh, it was used to be at the Sands. Oh, really? It used to be part of the Consumer Electronics Show. Like, if you had a CES badge, you could just walk right in. Oh, really? Wow. And then after a while, they separated like, it. Ah, and we're then... going to get the nerds. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they fantastic. always they always wanted to get I the nerds. I love your nerds. Um, yeah. And so then it became like this big part of uh, CES mm -hmm. or a sideshow of it. And then eventually they split it and it happened on different weeks. But... Mm -hmm. For a while, it was it was really important, and one of those important you know deals with porn and technology is Betamax because Sony wouldn't give porn studios duplicators, wouldn't sell them, and so uh, oh. it was illegal to duplicate you know to make porn and distribute it on on Betamax. Like Sony would like sue you, oh, or, wow. or they wouldn't give you the equipment to do it or something, and so VHS was able to sort of push through on that. So there's always been that sort of like handshake with technology because VHS was Yeah, well, was for sure. I feel deal. like technology is a huge advancer of porn. Yeah, well, porn, yeah, porn, because it's a place where there's always experimentation and mm -hmm. like results, you know, can be kind of mediocre and still be great. And mm -hmm. so people are like willing to try a new technology where like a TV show can't get their head around that. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's, I feel like, a, you know, obviously in mainstream 
you know, film production and stuff, it there's also just so many more hoops to jump through, so many more, you know, things to sign and contracts to be had. And and with porn, it's kind of like the the Wild West of it, where it's like, you know, you have your structure, but you you also have the ability with things like smaller crews, but still a lot of money to be able to kind of like try and advance that new technology as well and then kind of correlate it back to the business itself. Yeah. So back then, um, they it was in the Sands Convention Hall, like, uh, upstairs and, and then CES was downstairs and it was a big boost. It was Vivid, Hustler, mm-hmm. um, Wicked. Mm-hmm. They all had like really expensive like trade show booths. They had all their top stars there, big posters, signing opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, they'd have fan day. You know, I'd always go on media day because I had press pass and mm-hmm. that was like way more manageable but like yeah. fan day, Saturdays, F, F that. Yeah. And um you know there was there would be people there with inventions there was a guy teledildonics was a was a word people used at one time which is teledildonics yeah so now everybody comment below teledildonics in the way that you think that might be spelled help the algorithm (laughs) it's it's a latin base so you'll (laughs) give your spelling bee cues (laughs) that's amazing um (laughs) which was so yeah this guy had there was there's always these inventions where like you can put your dick in a thing and then like it's interactive in some way yeah. you know um so now everybody's got those little pink antennas sticking out of their back ends yeah uh, i'm not a fan of those i've discussed that before <laughs> because you know the 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 thought of like being able to like buzz somebody and to control it from somewhere else and it, it is cool for sure kind of, that's sort of cool but like you know, I, I bought one of those Wii, Wii Vibe, mm-hmm. right? And it's got the Bluetooth app, and that can go over the internet. My mm-hmm. partner was like up in, you know, wherever. And so we were trying to use that, and it just, it just sucks. Like, it's just like, wh- what the fuck? Like, who cares? Like, yeah, I, I, I can't actually see what your reaction is. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Um, And so, but what did make sense to me was when one day I was on cam and some, you know, girl on the other side of the planet Mm -hmm. has a a thing in her butt. Mm -hmm. And if I put a nickel in my computer, Mm -hmm. then it pokes it in and out of the butt all Mm -hmm. the way in the, just for like a dime. Yeah. Like that's like a petting zoo. Yeah. I'm just petting your butt with a dildo. Just right in. Yeah, like, so that, I mean, that's kind of cool, but yeah. the but the buzz thing just is no, like no, the, the buzz thing I'm I'm not a huge fan of, but I think you know I mean there's so much and you look at things like like VR porn has yeah. has started and and was available when it there was still kind of just more like the beta testing headsets and stuff like that, and I feel like it's cool to kind of watch how things progress with technology, but I feel like things like the in person meet and greets, um, especially with things like AVN, it's maybe not as necessary or popular because you you look at things like signings and you look at things like hover hands, you know, hover like, no, hands nobody and wants stuff to. like that for sure. But it's like when, when you look at how much now that people are utilizing platforms like only fans or loyal fans or any of the subscription type sites, and you're essentially, you know, that I feel like that used to be one of the big draws is that you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to interact with that porn star or with that cam model, maybe unless you were like there essentially right. and, and this is probably even you know the more popularity before camming i think camming yeah. is probably what took a lot of the interest out of maybe the convention thing itself just because it's like you are interacting with these people on a daily basis like i do this mm-hmm. and and i know and so there there already is that more personal connection and there's the ability to create that personalized content and you don't have to travel and and go spend and wait in line to go basically talk to this person when you can do it from the comfort of your own bed with your dick out you know like it's <laughs> i feel like <laughs> that's part of the reason that it's you know that's technology kinda waning. <laughs> it's technology for you we're advancing all over the place <laughs> i feel like people definitely got a taste for it during during the pandemic especially like um you know just people especially performers not being able to shoot because production is shut down so they're like well I'll make my own content where i have fans you, and they, they want to really... talk to me and they want to you know see me do stuff still and it's it's a work ethic thing but it's also it's like it's kind of addictive Mm -hmm. you know um i know like for me like filming the kink scenes um like i I reach like seeing people get beat up 
Mm -hmm. I like seeing like weird kinky shit happening. So yeah. like I had to figure out some way to bring that into my life. So I would like maintain that, that sense of, of normalcy or whatever. Right. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit tricky. Of course, I tried to film some stuff, but the rules on kink scenes are so tricky. Mm hmm. Um, there's, like you said, there's sites that they will accept things, but like OnlyFans is so vanilla that like you could break a rule so easily yeah. that the content is just then banned and then you have to find a, a whole different way to work on it. Yeah. Um, and I, I do believe, and I, I could be mistaken on this, but I believe, um, if there are performers who are listening and, and do like to provide more kink and fetish type content, as far as, um, subscription platforms go, I do, I do believe loyal fans is a lot more inclusive of different types of like more kink and fetish specific, um, style, uh, content. So if you're looking for a place to host that still has like subscription and stuff like that, run them in tandem. Like, you know, keep, you know, keep your kink, you know, more on a different platform that accepts it. And then it's like, you can kind of utilize both platforms to, to kind of it kinda, help you spread your reach a little bit more. Definitely. Like, I feel that's accurate, but I also feel like OnlyFans is just like, it's so easy that like everybody's got their credit card there already. So you're just trying to like get, get in that pocket, just get them to click oh, on that button. No, no. And it's like so much harder to get somebody to go to a website Set up in the new account. It is, but that, that's the, why I keep mine a dollar right now. It's not expensive. <laughs> which one? But my loyal fans. Oh. Because it's a platform that I've been exploring a lot and that I really I'll actually like. I'll give you like a dollar. The, yeah. I really, <laughs> I really like the capabilities of it. And I think that um, it's a platform that seems to care about the creator a lot more than, than a platform like OnlyFans. It's something that's trying to be more mainstream. And loyal fans yeah. was created by um, right industry. I believe, yeah, industry used to be uh, used to work for uh, Clips. It was like Clips for Sale or something okay. like that that w originally started this loyal fans. And they're always looking for creator feedback. Like the content creators, they want feedback on things, and they they've taken advice, um, even you know cues that just I've had from talking with them as well. And I feel like um, there's a lot more transparency because they want this platform to be able to work, especially if something like the debacle with what almost happened with OnlyFans happens again, they want to be able to make sure that there is kind of a safe place for us to, to go. And I think that it comes back to that whole, you know, it be, be responsible with your content, like make sure that when you have your content is backed up somewhere and it's not just on one platform, like OnlyFans, I know that was a huge scare for people when that happened. They're like, oh, well, yeah. how am I going to get my content? It's only right, here. Right, like right. it's good to be diversified simply for the fact that it's like with any site that you're on, there's a potential for it to be shut down, for payments to be stopped for one reason or another. So, it, it, you know, it behooves you to basically like spread your seed a little bit everywhere just so that you kind of have some fallback options. Yeah. The technical side of, of things, I mean, you can start being naked on the internet with a phone, mm -hmm. but like when it comes down to it, then you, you're you going to want lights. You're going to want some kind of camera. You're going to yeah. want like backup hard drives and cloud storage. But now with this new thing, this Earn It Act, it's, gonna f it's trying to F up all the cloud storage stuff. So like now people can be deplatformed from like the internet essentially. With It's like a thing going through Congress right now. And, it's, and this is what I'm sorry. I'm just it's called it's called the Earn It Act. Earn It Act. Yeah, it's uh, it's up there with SESTA and FOSTA. Um, it's meant to target you know child pornography and keep kids safe mm -hmm. um, at the expense of every single person's privacy. So anything you have stored in the cloud can be um, viewed by a private company to like figure out who you are, what you are, whatever, including your text messages, including uh, your, all your photos and stuff like that. And then once they determine that you're like, you know, insidious person or whatever, then they'll deplatform you completely. So Google will just say, oh, no, no sex workers like this is sex trafficking. You're just you can't do this. So we're, you're off. That's a very scary thing. Because the law would make it uh, them them. It would make them accountable it would make them like compliant or like a, an, an accomplice. Yeah, that's <clears throat> a censorship <laughs> has gotten out of control. Like, you know, there's a, there's always been, you know, here and there. But I, I feel like it's been the past five years, especially things have just gotten out of control. And it's to a point like 
I feel like there's not a lot of transparency. Like even, even when you look at far as far as like social media platforms, like what's admissible and what's not, for instance, like I, I can be tagged in, in photos that people have posted of me on Instagram, for instance, that are nude. These photos are up because maybe the account only has, you know, 500 followers or something like that. But when I am then tagged in those photos, that flags my account because it's nude. But I'm like, I'm not posting that. It's just me. Why is this photo allowed and not instantly tagged? But if I post something in a sweater and panties, it, it can get taken down. And it's like, you know, and or you see things on TikTok where it's like, that is dental floss that she is wearing. And then you get something removed where it's like, I, I posted a video once of just me, like, kissing my friend. And it wasn't like a, like, but it was like for her birthday, basically. And it was like, oh, that was, that was removed because it was like bullying and harassment. I was like, what is, <laughs> like, what are the rules? And so it becomes difficult with censorship to to basically pin down what is allowed and what is not, because at the end of the day, it comes down to what the platform provider dictates to any individual person at any given time, because that is their terms of service. So then it becomes, well, where do you go and where is really safe yeah. for anyone? Right. And, and, it, and it comes down to not even just sex workers in general, but when you look at deplatforming and it's like the, the who watches the watchers, because if you have any sort of, you know, opinion that may not be what, you know, they want you to have, or you, you, you get exactly. taken out of society because at the end of the day, that's what social media has become is a way for society to connect and to be involved in things that are going on, you know, whether you like it or not. So when you remove someone's ability to be a part of the conversation, it's like, you're going to create even more dissent. You're going to create even more um, the, unhappiness the, and unsettlement because the, you basically have this person who's like, oh, you know, maybe this one idea I had is, you know, contrary or whatever, but the rest of this is mine. Why am I being made into a villain? Why am I being taken out of this, you know, society and this conversation? I think the the further you push things into the into the shadows, like the more darkness, you know, comes out of that. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, I don't know, but it, so that's a that's a bad law that's going going through. The first time it went through was a couple of years ago, and it didn't make it out of committee. Now it's got a little bit more support, so it's a little bit dangerous. And you know, the industry now has a PAC for the first time lobbying in Washington for the industry. Mm -hmm. So um, that has made the 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 like people who are going against the rights. Um, a little nervous and yeah. so they're they're amping things up that's I good. guess that's that's yeah. that's what I've read on the well, emails I guess so, that's one of those things that all we can do is kind of wait and see can, but that's why I always tell people you it's, can learn more at free speech coalition free, free speech coalition <laughs> um, but yeah like I mean oh it's a scary time to be living in but that's why I always you know that's why I always say make sure that you have backups make sure that you have options make sure you cover all your bases make sure you have things like paperwork that you are you know, really covering your ass with things. Cause Paperwork's you just never really know. Hard. You just That's... never know when it can get taken out from under you. Yeah. But I don't know. Safeguard yourself. I don't know. Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You I have to, know. you have to have, uh, have to have the ability to recover. I, a website. Yeah. I've lost a bunch of websites. They go away and mm -hmm. then you lose all your, you lose everything. Facebook will go away one day. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it I already so. has. It's meta now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, but it's just like things are changing and, and there's a lot of things changing that people aren't even necessarily aware of until it's happened. And it's like with this, like this whole process, it's like I'd heard a little bit here and there, but not like the full extent of what that entailed. So I don't know. It's, it's a crazy, <laughs> it's a crazy time. I feel like there's, I feel like there's just nothing letting up lately. It just seems like. I have having you know, time in my life right now. Um, yeah, well, well, I'm my depression that, let up I so I guess that's at least something me too, good. But it's, it's something that's interesting to kind of see where it's like <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of positive things that have entered my life and my mental headspace yeah but also so much has been fucked up with the world and continues to kind of continue and grow in a way that I don't really find to be positive in these last couple of years have been very hard on everyone and the, I kind of worry for what's gonna you know, but I mean, at the same time, you can't worry. It's just don't, don't what look, will be will be. But don't it, look up. <laughs> 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 just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. We have been talking for a while. Would you like to tell everyone where they can find you on on the gram? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, if if you, contact for, if you're, for if you're and interested such. in checking out my photography, um, it's fantastic. Go, go to curtisjoewalker.com. Uh, that's got links to everything. You're going to find the best photos on Flickr and striking and uh, also 500 pics to a lower degree. Mm -hmm. um, my subscriber site uh, on Patreon is where you're going to get access to my archive of like thousands of images and hundreds of shoots. And then photobangbang.com is the studio where you can uh, rent uh, or book me for your photos. And so. highly recommend checking it out because there are different sets for everything. You could have a content day there and just yeah, get we have, so we have, many different looks. We have like five, five different shoot, main shooting areas. So mm -hmm. it's the cyclorama, there's the uh, dungeon, the clock tower, the boiler room, and the, the Victorian parlor. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of divide it into the light side and the dark side. Yeah. And so the dark side is the boiler room and the dungeon. And those are sort of dark rooms that are sort of fetishy and sort of scary. And those, those are a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for thank, joining me today. Yeah, for sure. This was very fun. <laughs> we had a lot of good conversations. Yeah. Thank you for smoking with me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's another one over there. We should do that one too. Yes, we definitely should. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you to be liking and subscribing and sharing with a friend and commenting for the algorithm. Anywhere that you can rate podcasts, I recommend that you do so. Hopefully five stars. And we will see you next week. <laughs>